Okay, if we can just start with um, the IT industry, is it something you always want to work in or if, oh, well, and even if you did or not, how did you get started in the industry? I I mean, I, I would say I sort of fell into it, but it was just a, a good decision at the time. I think I, I dropped out of university. I was studying in Bristol business management, just wasn't really getting on with it. I wasn't going to my lectures, wasn't spending much time there. Um, and so I thought I'll just quit and get a job. My dad always worked for himself and that's what I'd always seen. And he was very entrepreneurial. And I thought I can go out there. I was a bit of a go-getter. I was so competitive at that age. Um, and I ended up getting into sales because I feel like that's what a lot of people do. And I didn't have any experience. Um, and I basically went into the interview and I was like, I'll do my absolute best. I'll go in and beat the boys here. I was the only woman on the sales team. And they had loads of grads go for it and they hired me. And I think that was just on pure tenacity and passion. Um, and it ended up being, yeah, was, I was flipping refurb tech hardware, like old servers that would come in on trolleys and they'd refurb them. And I'd be ringing German companies like, you know, 200 calls a day or whatever. And they'd be saying, oh, this person isn't here anymore and all of that. And I was just turned 19, I think. So I was a teenager, only woman in the sales team. And that kind of got me into tech. But I've always enjoyed like technology and stuff I'm kind of always interested in what's coming up but yeah that's how it started and it just carried on from there it's one of those industries once you're in it you're kind of in it I think yeah um so it'd be good to understand as well from from that starting point the journey to to where you are today it'd be good to good to hear about that yeah it's been interesting actually so I, I'm from Cheltenham I started that job in Sirencester did two years of that and I actually got headhunted for a job in Manchester for quite a large tech company um and I was super excited. I was like, well, I dropped out of university, so let's move to a big city. I thought this is great timing. Um, and so I did that, literally upped my life, didn't know anyone here, uh, found a girl on spare room, moved in, spent like three nights in an Airbnb before starting work and then just got the keys to the flat and that was it. Um, but I did three and a half years at quite a large hosting company in Manchester, um, quite an interesting one as well. And that really kind of shaped me. It was a lot of fun, but it was quite difficult. And I just worked my way up. So I started in like a sort of sales role into an account management role, into a team leader role. And then I ended up leading the partnership team in the Southwest um, and focusing more on kind of like strategic relationships and a lot of moving people from, in, you know, a lot of people at that time, a lot of people were moving from like physical infrastructure to hybrid or cloud-based um, environments. So I was involved in a lot of that and I just learned a lot on the way. Um, and then I did a couple of other things and then I moved to, to the Hut Group and um, I was like leading their partnership team there and I ended up global head of partnerships within Ingenuity. Um, and then now I'm commercial director of like a new tech uh, project management software and training startup in Manchester. So it's been a real journey, but it's been interesting. I've kind of done a load of different things, mostly commercial type roles, but I've picked up so much knowledge on the way. You get so involved in things. You work with solution architects and things to build environments. So I've always been learning. OK, and in terms of your current role, you say you're where you are now but can you just tell us what what it is you do sort of day to day um, yeah what's going on yeah so it's called flolio and we are enterprise end-to-end -end, um cloud-based software uh, which has been built off a tried and tested methodology that our ceo steve has been working with loads of uh, different businesses for years and years on the consultancy side so he's basically taken what has been in his head and what's been working um, and transform that into a software over the last couple of years. So that's been built by a developer. He's from Manchester, but he lives in Colombia. So he's built that for us. Um, and it's at the stage of we are, we are out there selling it at the moment. And then the other side of the business is the training. Um, so we've got an off-call accredited training center. So we offer accredited training. So um, a three-day sort of micro course, everything that you would need to know. You don't have to be a project manager, um, but obviously it helps um, those you know in the PMO to kind of all be using the same methodology but yeah we've got two sides to the business um, and my day-to-day -day is I'm commercial director so essentially I'm overseeing all of the uh, marketing sales strategy we're also looking at you know building out pitch deck and things like that um because we'd like to go for investment um and we are involved in things like Barclays Eagle Labs we are part of their office space so we're with loads of like cyber and tech companies there um and we're on one of their their programs so it's all systems go at the moment basically <laughs> And in terms of the, the challenges that you presumably encountered along the way, I mean, you mentioned, I think, the first interview, you were the only 
um female in a room full of blokes shall we yeah. say um just uh, yeah challenges you've encountered what were, were any of them to do do you think with your gender or just more general business ones just your thoughts i suppose as to being a woman in what is quite a, a male still <laughs> regrettably a male dominated um, industry yeah i think it's certainly got better over the years but it's been it, it has been a difficulty um especially when I was that age I mean I was so young anyway it was my first you know proper job I was I was learning how to even you know behave or be in a, an environment like that let alone the fact that there were no other females and it was very male dominated and I got that sense I mean you know the first place I worked was like a boys club and it had been um and they were changing but I think you know they kind of been able to do whatever they wanted for the last few years and especially sales teams I mean um, yeah, it's definitely a certain type of, of person, but it's been difficult. I think I'm, I'm a massive advocate for sort of women in technology and especially uh, like previous jobs. I've been heavily involved in like even just myself, like I like to sort of deliver internal things you know conversations around um like negotiating salary and things like that because you know it's no um it, you know it's obvious that obviously we have a disparity with um you know uh, with that in the UK and with like the pay gap and things like that and especially in tech. I'm more commercially minded and I mean, I'm driven by money as well. So that's great for me. But a lot of other sort of females in this industry, especially in like very, you know, heavily tech focused roles um, are not as confident doing that. And, you know, obviously we've got to kind of uh, help where we can. So I've kind of taken that upon myself to help do things like that. And, you know, I'll speak on panels and things like that, but it's getting better. And it's great to see like, you know, apprenticeship programs and things. There's a lot more sort of young women. There's like a lot of, um, you know, girls can code and things like that. Um, but there's a long way to go, but it's definitely been difficult. I mean, well, especially when I was younger, I think, you know, on the phone, they'd sort of be like, I'm not speaking to the right person. You need to put me over to your manager or you need to put me over to a male colleague. And it's like, well, actually I am your account manager and I know everything about, you know, your infrastructure, but, you know, by all means. Um, but yeah, it's definitely been tricky but it's something you just kind of have to push through um yeah and in during your career at various stages have you been bumped into any sort of mentors individuals that have sort of helped you to establish yourself and or you know sort of develop your career path has, has that been something that's been you know useful for you Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm such an advocate for it. I talk about like mentor mentee schemes all the time, you know, on both sides of the coin. I think, you know, where I am now, I need, I'm actually on the lookout kind of for, for a mentor. I think it's so important to have that, especially external to, you know, your own internal business. Cause I think a lot of businesses will set up mentor programs, but sometimes there are things obviously you want to talk about that you can't talk about with colleagues and that you want to talk about externally um LinkedIn is incredible I, I've got quite a few people on there and other women that are just amazing and I think it's good to kind of have that positivity around um because sometimes you just need that but you know and I think when you get to a certain point as well you know it's great to step up and be a mentor because I don't think that people realize like I remember when I first started out in business there were people that I you know identified in the business that I really really looked up to and they probably didn't even realize how much I kind of looked up to them as role models because I wasn't really telling them that but I think that it's just having an awareness of that and that young people coming through the business are looking you know up to you and it's good to be a, a role model but yeah I think it's hugely important and there's so many like schemes and things like that like we have stuff in Manchester you know there's female specific ones or there's mixed ones um I've got one coming up, which is going to be part of the Barclays, uh, like Eagle Labs. So they've given me a mentor for that, which is fantastic. Um, but I would like one on more of like a personal level. So I need to find someone. <laughs> and in terms of any sort of lessons you've learned along the way that you think are, are sort of worth airing, sharing with folks as to, as again, you know, maybe whether it's general sort of business sort of understanding or, um, you know, being a female in the male dominated world just any any sort of thoughts you've got as to you know might help other folks I guess oh um gosh I think I think there's a lot of things I think it a lot of it's not easy um you know and like I said I think we're taking a lot of leaps forward which is amazing I think that businesses need to do a little bit more I think sometimes you know it's like oh it's International Women's Day so let's just focus on that for the day and then the next day it's kind of forgotten about and I think that a lot of these things have to be done with integrity. You can't sort of put these things in place just for a day and expect them to make a difference. So I think that there is responsibility kind of higher up within businesses to make sure that there's like still that line of communication and that people, you know, it's not just, you know, a day thing. I think me 
personally I've you know especially kind of moving up a bit and I'm going to be hiring people and things like that there's so much for me to think about now as like you know hopefully a next generation leader um but advice wise I mean I've just I don't know I, I think yeah it's just about believing in yourself and kind of pushing through those things and there are so many other people that are you know I think I think the mental thing is so important identifying people that you can speak to um you know other peers and things like that and just using like the people around you and your your network because it's it's likely that whatever you're kind of going through whether that's positive or negative other people have been through the same thing so you know networking is a brilliant way of doing that I think that going to events and speaking to other people and making new connections is always a good thing um you know I'm lucky because I'm in Manchester there's always something going on especially in the tech space so just going to things like that I think and 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 just um yeah interacting with other people and sharing experiences i think is probably um a bit of advice i'd say and in terms of the the industry and, and your sort of career and it, it sounds very much like you enjoyed it in the main um are there any particular aspects that you really love about the industry and and maybe and also perhaps on the other you know flip side and anything that sort of you find slightly less enjoyable or still annoys you about the way the industry operates <laughs> Um, I think I think what I love about it is tech is just so um, like like you're you're always at the at the the future of what's happening and and you're, you're kind of like your career isn't safe. I mean, no one's really safe. Obviously, we had COVID and that you know put a huge spanner in the works for so many different industries that probably yeah we're not expecting it. I mean, obviously anything can happen, but tech is just such an interesting space. I think there's always something to learn about and something to you know, constantly, like we're looking at, um, well, we've implemented AI into the system, but we're looking at machine learning and things like that. And it's just exciting. I just find it interesting. Um, I do. Yeah, I think on the flip side, we do just have a long way to go. And especially with like, you know, the male versus sort of female and, and things like that. Well, I won't say versus, but, um, you know, the amount it's a male dominated industry still. And I do think that we can tell that in certain areas. But I think it's changing and I think that tech is just a, 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 an exciting place to be and the amount of different businesses that are popping up and startups and things like that. It's great to see. But yeah, overall, I love it. I mean, I've done, well, not that long, I guess, what, 10 years now. So still going strong. <laughs> and in terms of, I mean, I, I think you've referenced it slightly earlier, but you might want to say a bit more in terms of the the, the role model you've obviously um, had various mentors along the way, but do you yourself feel a bit of a responsibility having you know developed a successful career in the industry to give back and to encourage more um you know females to whether it's to join the industry or when they you know rock up at you know Flolio, et cetera? Just just what responsibility do you feel in terms of helping women within the industry? Yeah, I think I do definitely feel a sense of responsibility for that. And I, that I, I really enjoy that. I think that it's a very kind of fulfilling thing but it's also you do have you know that kind of imposter syndrome but like I said with kind of the delivering the the salary negotiation talks and things like that like you don't know who that's going to help and I did that previously and there was one girl that well she was leaving the business but I helped her you know negotiate that salary which is not something she would have done and that's something that is going to impact you know her life and her livelihood and I think that people underestimate the importance of that and um yeah I also so LinkedIn I'm I'm kind of active on there I think I could do a lot more um but I definitely need to post a bit more on there but I also have a bit of a social media following um and a lot of the people on there have messaged me. I mean, I had so many messages from young women that were in tech, which was quite overwhelming. I mean, it was incredible, but it was still quite overwhelming. Um, but it just, it, it, it pushed me to do it even more, I think, because especially when people talk about their own experiences, you know, in male dominated industries and things like that, I think it kind of just propels you to kind of, you know, do the best you can and be a voice. I think that it's important for anyone that has any kind of platform to use that in a really positive way. And I do try and do that. I mean, I could always do more. Um, um, but yeah, I would say it's kind of weird to think that I am a role model in that way for people, but I kind of am. So I, I, I need to lean into that more and there's more things that I can be doing for sure. And in terms of how organisations and obviously the folks that work for them can sort of develop the workplace to be truly inclusive, any thoughts? I mean, do you have the opportunity where you are now to sort of help shape that kind of program and any sort of thoughts, I suppose, as to ways in which organizations can can improve the situation which as you say is hopefully yeah. improving anyway but there's still a, a still a way to go I guess yeah I think 
absolutely where I am now. I mean, we're a very small team. We're just starting out. It's amazing because we've got myself and Katie that are on the board. You know, we're both female directors, which is brilliant. And um, we have a fantastic relationship with our CEO, Steve. And he's, you know, so open to anything that we suggest. I feel like it's such a, I think, I think it's about creating like a safe, comfortable space to be able to share ideas and also know that there's that level of respect. I think that's what's really important. And, you know, we do have that within our business. I think as we grow, that's going to be interesting. I'm quite excited to implement you know, some of the things that larger businesses do and that kind of inclusivity. But like I said before, I think everything has to be done with integrity. I think businesses can can always do more. And I, I think it is just a case of if you are going to do something just for the day or to celebrate a certain, you know, let's say it was, you know, International Women's Day. Fantastic. That's great. But it just needs to be, you know, followed up and kind of implemented, not just on that day. And I think that's where businesses sometimes, you know, I get that everyone's busy and things like that. But if you just do something once, it's not necessarily going to stick. Um, and also, if, if you're kind of like delivering something that's going to kind of spur um, thoughts or feelings and that kind of thing, then it needs to be like followed up and that those people feel they can kind of comfortably, you know, talk to their peers about it and colleagues and managers and things like that. So I think it's, I think a lot of it is about communication, to be honest, um, and not just doing things once and saying, oh, well, we've ticked a box and then it's done. Um, but it'd be interesting for myself to do it. I think, you know, I talk about it. Obviously, it's not as easy. You, you have to do the do. So actions speak louder than words with these things. And maybe just um, in, in finishing, um, if you had a magic wand, and I know our new new government keep telling everyone they don't have a magic wand, don't exist, but if you were to have a magic wand and have an opportunity to um, change one or two things in the industry, is there any sort of thing that really irritates you and or just something you can see the industry could do a, a, you know, a great deal better than it perhaps is at the moment? <laughs> Do I say the gender pay gap or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, clearly, yeah. <laughs> I think... I think I think I think there's a lot to be done. I think that we are really moving in the right direction. But I think just 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 having more, you know, more females step up and talk about their experiences and implementing strategies and kind of bringing I think bringing young people up through the ranks like um something that I love doing is going and speaking to students and things like that like I'm a university dropout. I've done okay for myself, but I've been through a lot through my career, through, you know, different things that have happened in a male dominated industry and things like that, but I think it's just yeah, I mean, it's hard to say exactly what, but there's a lot that we can be doing. But it's just more communication, more people talking, more people kind of stepping up into those role model type positions and kind of talking about their experiences and just helping guide younger people up through the ranks, I think, and just making them feel comfortable in, in you know, in a new industry. Okay, and maybe just finally, finally, because you've given me some good time, I appreciate that. Um, back to the company. Um, you obviously explained a little bit about what it, it does do, but in terms of the roadmap, is there anything you can share? You, I think you already mentioned you obviously want to grow the company significantly, but just whether it's you know developing the, the company uh, structure and or any sort of technology solutions, just yeah, anything you can share. Yeah, so I mean, at the moment, we're just full speed ahead. We're, we're, we're getting live customers onto the software and, you know, that's the main focus. And we're just, um, you know, developing the software itself. I mean, the roadmap is incredible. We, we've implemented AI, but we want to train that so that it's specific to, you know, project management and it makes a massive difference to, you know, people's day to day and, and they can use that to save a load of time and money. Um, and then the machine learning is exciting. We want to be able to kind of look at things like lessons learned in a project and then um, use that data, analyze it, and then basically, you know, use that to estimate if that will happen again in future projects, which will be amazing for businesses because they can kind of plan, you know, as they go and have a lot more insight into uh, whether those projects will succeed and things like that. Um, but yeah, I think we're just we're just full steam ahead with like the commercial side at the moment we want to get live customers we want to grow you know our customer base we we're not just uk based we want to take that globally um and just make it make a difference really like we're hoping that you know this tool will help more projects be successful and ultimately more businesses will have better outcomes and that's what we're hoping for and also the training we want to train more people so that you know you don't have things like people having to leave businesses because they can't cope or they're under stress because they're, you know, they don't know and um, they've been put in a role and they don't necessarily are able to fulfill it, you know. So we're hoping that we can train younger people, also people in, you know, PMO positions and things like that. So that's what we hope for. <laughs> OK, it's been fantastic to chat. Some great insights into what's going on, both with you know, your own career and also the company. Um, so, Sophie, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot.